Let us differentiate the terms periodic motion, oscillatory motion, and simple harmonic motion because sometimes people interchange the usage of these terms even if there's technically difference in their operational definitions. Let's begin with periodic motion. Examples of periodic motion includes the movement of the hands of a clock, the swinging of a pendulum, and the rotation or revolution of satellites and planets. So what is a periodic motion? A periodic motion is any type of motion that repeats after a fixed interval of time. And this interval of time is called period. Later, we symbolized period with capital T. The period of the shorter hand of the clock is 12 hours while the longer hand is 1 hour. When it comes to this pendulum, the period of this pendulum is based on the length of this string and the magnitude of the acceleration due to gravity. So if you're in planet Earth and you're near the surface of the Earth, this acceleration due to gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second. The orbital period of the moon's revolution around the Earth is 27.3 days. And notice that a periodic motion doesn't need to have a circular or elliptical path during its motion like what is shown by this pendulum. The important thing is that it must repeat its motion after a specific interval of time. When we say oscillatory motion, it is a type of periodic motion with well-defined equilibrium position. In this example, when the pushing force of the spring is balanced by its pulling force, then this block stays at an equilibrium position. In general, equilibrium position refers to a position where the system has a minimum energy. If natural forces are acting on the object, these forces tend to restore the object in its equilibrium position. Again, if you can pinpoint an equilibrium position for a periodic motion, then that periodic motion is called an oscillatory motion. Finally, there's a special type of oscillatory motion where the system's restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement from its equilibrium position. And we call this oscillatory motion as simple harmonic motion. In this example, if we symbolize the restoring force with F, F is directly proportional to the block's displacement from equilibrium position. Let's symbolize the displacement with X. Hence, in simple harmonic motion, the restoring force is directly proportional to the block's or to the object's displacement from equilibrium position. In terms of equation, F is equal to negative k times x, where k is what we call the force constant. Based on my demonstration here, the net force vector is directly proportional to the displacement, but it acts in the opposite direction of the displacement. A system that oscillates with this rule is called a simple harmonic oscillator. Here, the maximum displacement of the object from the equilibrium position is called the amplitude, which we often symbolized as a, a familiar object that naturally possesses a restoring force when you displace it from equilibrium position is called a spring. Also, what you can observe in the demonstration, assuming that there's no dissipation of energy, when the object or block passes through the equilibrium position, it has the maximum magnitude of velocity. But at the equilibrium position, the acceleration of the object is zero because it is neither pushed nor pulled by the spring. Of course, when V is maximum here, the kinetic energy is maximum here as well. When the object is at the amplitude momentarily at this point and at this point, the acceleration must be maximum 
because it experiences the greatest pulling force or pushing force from the spring. Going back to this equation, let me write this in terms of the force constant, K equals F over X. Since the SI unit of force is Newton, and the SI unit of displacement is meter, then the SI unit of this constant of proportionality is Newton per meter. As a final note, it is important to study simple harmonic motion because this kind of periodic motion results to a period or frequency that is independent of amplitude. So what affects the period is the force constant K. So the larger the force constant, the greater the frequency. And since frequency is equal to the reciprocal of period, the greater the force constant, the smaller the period. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell button for awesome updates. Thank you for watching!